To the under 16s girls grand final between Orange Thunder and the Hills Hornets. Two clubs that have got good following, got Country vs City. I'm um, joining commentary with Jason Stanton. How do you think this one will go, Jace? Well, it'd be it'd be hard not to tip the Hills after uh, seeing how well their uh, girls teams have done over the weekend. They just just polished off the uh, 14s title. And uh, the 16s would be looking to go go for the double. There was quite a nice little uh, entrance there. Yeah, they had a nice oh, tunnel happening. And they're all off the field and we're all ready to roll for the big dance. And we got Hills. Hornets will get the tap off underway. This is definitely a player to watch in the 23. Daisy, uh, sorry, wrong side. Ellis, young Ellis there in the 23. And also the one in Jones. These two young girls will work together a lot. They've played women's open system for Hills as well. So a bit of experience from a young girl. And here is Ellis from half straight away. Finds a 21 and they're in the corner straight away with Matthews. Hills open on their first set of six. That was super, super well executed there from Hills. The uh, Sometimes referred to as a bit of a trail where the scooper goes through, taking on the line and then the player that dumped the ball almost follows them. Yep. And that's, that's often quite tricky to defend, and uh, it caught, uh, caught Orange out on that occasion. Yeah, I've, I was taught that as a very young one, where the hole is, where the dummy half goes through. That's where the hole will be for you to go through. So here we go, Orange, tr try and hit back. This is Dixon with the ball. 88 is Thornhill. Thornhill gives back to Dixon. Dixon with the long ball out to the 22 in Banks, but just couldn't hold on to the ball. Here we have Hills. Working the ball from their own box corner. Plays direct on one. That's good touch. Just ran over the mark. And this is Ellis. Ellis with the ball. Here we have Hills bringing fresh legs on in the two. Rang Varney. And this is Ellis again. Dishes the ball back. Is down. Ellis scoops from half. She's through. She's opening them up. Straight down the middle. And here's... El oh, Wow. Ellis has carved him up through the middle, and that would be Hollis. All clear, Mr. Referee says, and we're going up 5-0 on the 3-2 scoreboard. Yeah, and absolutely uh, great great drive there from, from the Hills team. Often we see the, see the try at the end, or we see the good scoop, and we have to you know, not forget that it was on, on the back of great team play and great drive to set the platform for that scoop. So, well done, Hills. Yes, well done to the young girls. Let's see if Orange can hit back. Here with a three and Cole. Young Ava Cole with the ball and the one in Clark. Clark and 23 and Baringa is working well together here. And this will be Cole again. Looks to dish ball inside, but held on to it. And this is the last play. You'll see if they've got a trick play on the last. And Cole with the ball. Goes out to Clark. Clark out to the wing and they just kill it over the sideline, which isn't too bad. We'll see some defensive pressure coming here from the Orange Thunder. Yeah, Orange, we've, we've been noticing uh, many of the Orange teams featuring in the, in the quarters and semis and finals. Uh, Stan, has that, has that been something of, of recent where they've come strong or have they been, a, yeah. been strong in the juniors for some time now? In the girls' system, they've been quite strong. Um, they've had a good pathway. They've got some good coaches. But once again, 21 will come back to that. In 21 has broken away and Matthews opens them up. And wow, having the Hills wow, Hornets started of, strong. They're out of the blocks. But yes, out of we'll, the blocks. I think Orange are a bit shell shocked. Yes, we'll jump back to the Orange system. They've they've got some quality coaches in their pathways at the moment. 
and and they're taking a lot from a state level and a national level back into the Orange affiliate. Like and like sharing the yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah that, their that, development that, program's been really good in the women's and also their boys' system's really starting to come for as well. So mm. one of the probably the stronger country affiliates, they've just moved down to the Suns region. They were with the Hunter Hornets, but with the new region split, they are now down with the Suns. And you can also see the progression that the Suns have come with, with Wagga and Orange combining. They're a real stronghold in the regionals now as well. Yeah, I've noticed uh, very big uh, jumps from, from Wagga as well. That's a great long oh, ball. Dixon with the long ball out it's to the wing. Close. It's going to be close. All clear, and Marsh has caught, scored it in the corner. So Orange hit back. That was a great try, and I'd, I'd like to see him uh, probably do more of that. They need to sort of, we've been talking about a bit throughout the day, those plays were against the run of play where you might do a, a dump towards the middle, make it appear like you're going to go left and then take back off to the right the opposite way with a long ball to the winger. And that was uh, that was very well executed there by Orange. Yes, very well executed. And here we have the five in Bazzini. No, Bazzina, sorry. Bazzina. And Lemusu with the ball. And this is Thomas from half. And good left to right pass there by the 13 in Hollis, but she couldn't find the target, so... Good defensive set there by Orange. They will work off their own line for touch one, but we can see the press defense here from the Hills Hornets and good communication telling the defenders to push out and try the little trial the play. Yep. Try the, the little, try the little trial play, but just the pressure. Here's yeah, that, 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 that was very good pressure there from Hills. And, um, the, you know, different teams will use different words. Here we have them down the sideline, the 10. The 10 in Hayne. Hayne scores in the corner and... They hit back straight away as just that defensive pressure. I don't count that on the try. I count that the, the, the defence. Yeah, hundred percent. And and that's that's where you come back to the the team as a whole, or even larger to the female program and what you instill in in the players. And that was really good pressure. I was just before the try. I was going to mention some teams might call it a a, a blitz or a press yep. or shooting. Yep. Pretty much as a defensive line, you can either wait for the attack to drive at you, or you can actually get up and. Yep. Um, those things are all interchangeable type terms, shooting, pressing, um, all those sorts of things. So, yeah, Hills did it very well. And here we have Barrett, and here's a three on the sweep back into Barrett. Good defence there. Oh, we may have an injury. Yeah, I think there might have been a knee or an ankle. Hopefully she's okay. But uh, we sort of rolled into the, the next couple of tries, but I think it was Matthews from Hills on that breakaway. Um, I, I thought she was at top speed, Stoney, and then she... Uh, she had, she had another two gears. That was exceptional speed shown by Matthews. So we'll just pause the game. I don't know whether we've... Uh, I don't think we stopped the clock in this situation. So it um, could have been a left... It would have been near an ankle. It was, it was a well-executed play, but um, uh, un unfortunately she got uh, a little bit tangled up there. So I hope she's good. Right, let's see what uh, Orange jumped the gun a little bit there. The referee will get him back and make sure everyone's set. So it's, um, I think it's four scores to one or nine two. So uh, Orange got a little bit of work to do. But um, yeah, Hills have definitely uh, got out of the um, got out of the blocks quick here and really uh, really set the standard for this grand final. Yes. Thank you for covering me there, Jace. I was just making sure that medical was coming to the stadium for that young girl. But we've got the Hills Hornets. Coming off their own line, they're playing a direct set here in the 17. And that is Mer Marchant. And here is the young girl, Ellis, again. Play on the call, but what a step. They've opened them up again. Oh, I just couldn't find that last pass, unluckily. But once again, Ellis. As soon as she's got the ball, you know something's going to happen. And there's lots of rivalries, I think, starting to build um, in, the, uh, in the female programs. I know... Um, up north, you know, you probably talk about the maybe the Renegades and the Sea Eagles and, and down here we've got the, I guess we've got the Vipers and the Thunder and who else would you add to that, Stoney? Uh, well, obviously the obvious one would be probably East Canterbury. Um, that's one that comes to mind. Um, oh, who else we got? Panthers, probably Hornsby in the men's system from a few years back. They were, um, they were both powerhouses at the same time. But yeah, we always get the, the clashes and they come through in the same age brackets. But looks like at the moment the... The Hills Hornets, they're a real stronghold of the South, but 
Be interested to see come state finals how many Hills Hornets may match, match up against the Manly Seagulls, yeah. who are a dominant force in New South Wales touch. Yeah, big, big rivalry there. Can we squeeze in Port Macquarie? Uh, still in development. What are they? Port Macquarie, what? Mako's now, so... Mako's? We could go to the Mako's for the Sharks, but they've opened them up once again, and what ball skills by the young girls to finish it off in the corner, and they've taken an 11-2 lead. Great finish, but again, as you said, Stoney, before it... This is coming from that defensive pressure from the good drive. It's very good team play, not yep. more so than a, a, a trick play or something on the end. This is this is good team play being shown here today. Yeah, so two minutes 30 left to go before half time, And I, I think Orange Thunder, they really need to hit back hard here and keep themselves in the game. Here we have the five in Gibson driving the ball forward to the 88 in Thornhill. Thornhill and Gibson with the ball again. Split and dump and steps back, gives it back to Thornhill, but ball was down and good tight defence once again by the Hills Hornets. Yeah, Orange Orange have had a very strong weekend and, uh, you know, they've obviously come up against a classy outfit here and it's uh, it'll be going to be interesting after the break what, what they can come up with. Yeah, that, that is true, but just there a full pass by the looks of it. Um, yeah, the referee looks like he's picked something up back over there. I was looking where the ball was, but they've gone to... Kind of go back, are they? Yeah, yeah. got to go back uh, another full... You see, he skipped over the Port Macquarie Mako. Is that a, is that a mud crab, something else? Mudgy uh, mud crab? That's a mudgy. Um, probably the, the Port Macquarie Maxville. They're, they're two towns. Port Macquarie Pirates. Can I change your Port logo on the floor? That's the what? rugby club up there, mate. You're can into your rugby too much. <laughs> oh, can I change it? How about Port Macquarie Parrots? The par if the you've got parrots. any good ideas, can you send them through? <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's only been changed to the to the Port Makos because it was the Port Sharks there for a while. It was the Sharks, was it? Yeah, yeah. So it was so, the Port Macquarie yeah. Sharks. Yeah, just uh, that, that was after the rugby league team up there, but um, yeah, they've changed to the Makos because now we've got the Cronulla Sharks in touch. So here we have back to the game. Hills driving the ball forward once again. They're going very direct and away from their box, which is I think. Oh, they've picked something up in the ruck again. They've got seven, eight on. How many can we have on the field at once? Yeah, they've, they've pulled something the forward <laughs> pass. and they got a count off? No, they've got today. Yeah. They've pulled another one off. So they got back to six on, on the field. I think so. Oh, I'm, I'm not very good at maths, but uh, you don't need to be a, have a calculator work out. <laughs> they, they had too many on then. And Thornhill dishes the ball off to Dixon, the danger. I think that's a danger player for Orange. And here we have the, the one in Clark. Gets a quickie play. Oh, Dishes it back play. into the 23. And the Baringa again. back against the grain. And I love it. They've opened them up through the middle. That could be something they go back to later on in the game. But they needed to score there just before half time with 15 seconds to go on the clock. Yeah, Thunder showing. They, they've, got a few, they've got a few tricks up their sleeves. Another trail. I love seeing that variety in attack. Not just lateral going around or not just diving forward, but... Changing the line and having a trail, that's that's very good from the from the Orange Thunder. Yeah, very well. And here we go, down the sideline again, but good cover defence there by the Orange Thunder. A big one in this halftime break. I'm interested to see. We've got two very talented coaches and national coaches in Mel Mitchell and also Joel Begnall. It'll be interesting to see what tips and strategies they give their team to go into the second half with. We'll t take a short break and be back with you in a minute.
pretty good performance from the referees too, yes. as well. We haven't uh, haven't had to mention it much in the commentary, which shows that they're opening up the game. Good early calls, good positioning, and letting the uh, allowing allowing for a, a great entertaining match. Yes, they have been good, and I, I had a little tip from a couple of the referees we we're talking about before the the top three. They've just been filling in. So they will not be on the 18s game, like we said. So after your rankings, we've got Mr. Calabria finishing number one from the weekend. Yeah. From your point of view. No, nah, that's, that's not my... That's, that's the official <laughs> Guzmani <laughs> Gomez referee rankings. <laughs> I'm not sure what this ever has touched do with the one, two, three, but we're pretty clear at GYG how we set this up. We've got Calabria one, <laughs> Kim Skelly two, Baggio three... Badger will be okay with that because he was ranked number one for like 48 years. So. All right, so back to the game. We'll come back to that a little bit later. And once again, we've got the Orange Thunder tapping off here. Looking to hit straight back. Yeah, a couple get early scores. What yeah, do you think get they themselves need? back into the game with Baringa with the ball. This is the one in Clark. Clark and Baringa. They did set up that last try, so they've gone back to that same play. And here's Clark again. Here it is, the short side quickie. Step back. The link's in. They've hit long ball out to the wing and... Just unfortunately couldn't find that long pass, but it was the same play, well constructed. So obviously Joel Begnell done a bit of his homework during half time. Yeah, that was that was very well constructed play, and uh, oh, this Orange are showing their class, aren't they? Yes, they are, and here's a cheap turnover here for Orange. So once again they got another chance. Here's Clark, Clark with the ball and Baringa again, once again. So Clark splits the opposite way this time. Clark goes short side. And the four gets a little bit of a push, but referee said that's fine. And Bryant plays the ball, gives it to Clark. Yeah, really important for uh, Orange to see if they can get a try. Whenever you're able to get a cheap turnover, you've got to make, make the more fancy teams pay. There you go. There she goes. She lines it up again and just couldn't balance herself up. I think that's the right idea. The, well, as soon as she steps back, the Hills defense is shutting down. But she couldn't balance herself up to rip that big long ball. Yeah, sometimes the uh, sometimes the defence when they when they rush you or they get up in your face, it makes it hard to because you you know you need to pass the ball earlier than what you want to, and that's what puts you off balance. Yeah, that is that is correct. And this is a nine in Lemusu driving the ball forward, made good ground there, and the seventeen in Marchant, Marchant Lemusu, and the three in Thomas. Thomas drives the ball, dishes the ball back to Lemusu. We've got a sweep coming here. Thomas from half, she's three, she's over, she's looking for open play. She's still running. They've left her alone, trying to find open players, but just couldn't find that last pass. Yeah, it went to ground, but needless to say, that was a first-class uh, scoop there. It's, it's, it's one of the most difficult things to teach is to, you know, when you get the scoop and get the end goal, then calm yourself, don't rush it, and try and look for an open player. And she did a great job there, just, uh, just a little bit unfortunate, almost, almost got the try. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't far off and just couldn't find that last pass. But once again, we've got Orange working the ball through the middle and, Look to have a middle, middle drive. They pop out. They throw the pop out play. They're trying to get the ball down for Dixon, but the nine goes short side. And this is Barrett. Passes the ball at Simmons. Just couldn't find open space. Once. And this is going to, this, this sort of, uh, this sort of tempo game is going to suit Hills now. They, they're, they're happy to, to flow up and down the field here for the next four or five minutes. Take the, take the wind out of the sails out of this grand final. And it's going to be up up to the thunder they, they've got to they've got to press the issue they've got to get up they've got to ask questions yeah, see they, if they can swing my man and back very much got to add defensive pressure to this game and here we have the one in jones calling the plays here jones will go to half we'll look for a strike dump we could see something from matthews out wide and there it is out to matthews she's through she's over matthews going to find the try line and she scores i believe the ball is down and that is it that makes it 13-4 with eight minutes to go to the Hills Hornets. Yeah, was that Tia Matthews again? It's a yes, it was. Express pace. You're not going to often pick up her uh, for the touch from behind, are you? No, no. She's got a lot of pace about her. She's a taller girl than a lot of the others on the field. Here we go. Orange, I think, they really need to strike here and then try and get a defensive set. Stop. And we have Clark with the ball. Finds a winger down the sideline, the 17 in Naden. Good cover defence there by the Hills girls. Here they have the ball, dished off to Clark. Clark and Baringa again in the middle. Baringa splits, we've got a sweeper play coming around the open side. That is Martin with the ball. Yeah, well Martin. contained from Hills, great day. 
Martin and Clark just throws the ball out just to kill it on the sideline again. But this is where we need to see that pressure that we're talking from. The defensive pressure. Mm. Here we have Hills working off their own line. Mm. It wasn't that fantastic play up uh, prior there with Hills. Was it? Was I think it was Jones. She's yep. Jones she's, found she's the open space. She's been fantastic all, all game. She has been, and I'm just was starting to really watch the um, the Hills ruck and set. It's a lot different to most other teams. They're actually sending two girls off early, and they're getting fresh legs on really quick. So. Something a little bit different from Mel Mitchell and the coaching staff from Hills. But here we go. Ellis through the middle, steps, finds that girl oh, again. Matthews. And that is Matthews. And I think that could be a hat trick, I think. Yeah, she, she's not shy when it comes to scoring tries, Stoney. No, she no. She knows her way to the line. And she, that, that, that driving you're talking about, I think it's um, when you're talking about the uh, Hills team, when you, when you send a couple of players off early, it's, it's sort of like a, a bit of a, a measured gamble because if if the opposition doesn't shoot at you or you can get that first drive then you get a big benefit yes if the opposition get up in your face and you don't get a good roll on then you you know you, you don't have many players on the field to to get the drive going so it's a it's something that the um coaches will assess before the game and no doubt um mel mitchell there has assessed what's required and, and she's come up with something different for the grand final yeah that's exactly right and here we have the orange and that is the nine in barrett with the ball Barrett, I'd like to see them get Dixon in the link here involved. And Barrett, here we go. Dixon for a rooster play. No, they run a chicken play. So it's on the out and there's a trail back on the inside. But they try to construct it. And I'd like to see him get Dixon involved. I think she could be the weapon for Orange to try and make a comeback. And this is Ellis. Yeah, we've seen, um, can't speak highly enough for the Hills program, seeing the 14s dominate in the previous grand final then then adding that or you know coupling that to this performance we're seeing the obviously uh very strong program out there at hills and here we have the 17 in march and trying to scoop through but there i come back to that rucking set that's probably what you said just before jace it's a bit of a risk and reward if it if it pays off and you can make ground early it can be good to have the fresh legs but just there they got a little bit stuck in there in half and the orange girls really pressed and they really were scooping from halfway. So something to look at for the coaching staff, obviously, um, to re review possibly if they do go on and win this this game. Yeah. Um, oh, a little bit of, little bit yeah. of heavy contact, but a bit of an accident. Yeah, a bit of an accident there, I think. And that's, that's, that's what will happen. That's why this unique format is uh, it's very intriguing. Like Mel Mitchell, hopefully they get the win today and then she'll, um, she'll reassess what worked, what didn't work. She'll also watch the Bar TV live stream next week, no doubt. Just mute it. Yeah, and then she'll come up with the... Uh, and here's Clark. Returns the ball to Baringa. Yeah, she'll come up with the game plan for the final. And here we go. Clark and Baringa working again together. These have been the, the two dominant players for the Orange Thunder. And that's Clark. Gives it out to the link. Oh, had the number there. I'd like to see him go back to that open side quickie play with a step back. That's possibly something they could go back to to try and get a couple of late tries in this game. But here we go again. Here's the rucking set two off and the three or four girls are got to drive the ball through the middle mm, here we have three man drive you're talking oh three player drive and yep. that's where um yeah as you said risk and reward that's probably a good way to go. put it it's, <laughs> it's broke down jones had no half but they get the ball away and jones finds a flow and here comes ellis flying on from the sideline and jones and ellis ellis will go from half she goes short side she's opened them up once again but Oh, they've they've called Baringa on, so we'll play the referee. And mm. is Ellis one of the uh, is Ellis one of the players that that made the women's this year? Like she's, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing today yeah, young, from Ellis. I, I believe young Ellis and young Ava Jones. Uh, they both played the women's premier division mm. for the Hills Hornets this year, or last year, should I say, at State Cup. Yeah, um, um, two very well, young girls, but a lot of talent there. I've also I saw them at the Aussie camp couple of weeks back so very talented young girls here we have dixon dixon dishes ball out we've got oh, wow. orange what a dummy what a finish oh wow we've got simmons and that's well deserved that well is deserved. They've, they've had a great tournament they've tried hard. outclassed a bit today but yep they've, they've, they've very try. much tried hard and i think um young dixon's the one there that could have had the hot end and she showed a bit of a skill there she's She's maybe one to watch in the next couple of years for the Orange Thunder, and I believe Joel Begnall and their coaching staff will 
possibly move on to the next age division with this group. But once again, we have the Hills Hornets. Here we Matthews have Matthews again. again. Is that she's got some, for Matthews? She's got some speed. She's blinding with speed, uh, Matthews. The thing with Ellis that um, I suppose, you know, jumps out a bit at me is that she's uh, clearly very talented, but I think there's a lot lot more development. Like, I think she's got, you know, four or five more levels yes, of, yeah. of development in her. So that's uh, definitely pretty, one pretty scary. Definitely one to watch. Yeah, definitely one to watch. And here we have the Orange Thunder driving the ball off. And this is Baringa again. Yeah, it's great work by Hills. Fresh legs on, yes. Yeah. They're pushing forward hard here. Orange Thunder running. Here's Dixon. Dixon from half. And this is the nine in Barrett. Barrett comes out of half. Gives the ball out to the wing and just kills the ball out wide. Many in the many in the touch community might be aware of um, Brad Mitchell, which I think is Melissa Mitchell's better half. So maybe that's part of the game plan as well. Brad, you stay at home and, yes. let, and let, let me do the heavy lifting. <laughs> no, I, I did see him here somewhere. He's roaming around the fields, but... No, yeah. We'll give him a water bottle or something. Then. <laughs> Melissa's maybe doing spray, a great job here. The spray bottle for the girls, you reckon? I think uh, we've got to stamp Brad Mitchell's file with not required because the... Uh, <laughs> The hills look amazing here, and Melissa's doing a great job. Yes, and there we have Thomas out of half again. She looks lethal out of dummy half. Once again, Orange working off their own line. And once again, the, just the hills hornets, just their press. They're just sending one up. I think Orange need to try and play a bit of eyes up on touch two and three to try and get behind the first line of defense. Here we have Baringa and Clark. Bringer and Clark through the middle with only 30 seconds to go on the clock. Clark out of half, steps, returns the ball, and it's a late pass. So good touch there by the 25 in Smith. And Smith taps the ball, drives the ball forward. They're going to play direct. Straight through the middle they go. And the six into Marcivi. And this is Thomas. Thomas with the ball, dishes it back to Smith. And here's Thomas out of half. Jinx, steps, back down again for Smith. Just slows the ball down, and I think they'll call. That's it. Hills Hornets. No, Thomas hasn't given up. Beats Baringa on the outside, and Thomas rubs a bit of salt into the wound, and she never gave up until the whistle had sounded, and yeah, Hills Hornets of... run out winners. That's a great try. Hills putting an exclamation mark on this uh, on this championship with a with a win, uh, uh, try, sorry, after the siren to seal the win, and um, can't speak highly enough for the uh, standard of play we've seen. Orange definitely had a had a um, a solid a solid weekend and beat many of uh, opponents that I think would be more fancy to get through to the final. But uh, but uh, no match unfortunately for uh, Hills today. No, there was no match. I think that's that's a couple of teams that they'll fight these grand finals out. I believe about two or three years ago. Um, it was the same two teams battling it out in the 18s girls and the orange girls got the upper hand in that game but Hills get the upper hand this year in the under 16 girls and we'll be back very shortly with the under 18s girls grand final between Eastern Roosters and the Brindy Canberra Brindy girls.